Jesus will give a wrong interpretation. And the old interpretation, ah, he doesn't love me because he's not smiling at me. No, he loves you. He just has a personal problem he's thinking about and he's not looking your direction. Have a new interpretation this year. And it is that new interpretation that gets you into a new action and a new habit and a new disposition and a new lifestyle. A new interpretation. There should be a new journal. A new journal. A journal is a diary. That means every day as you are praying from December retreat, from the December retreat and then you are still praying every day and praying in every service and then you have all this journal, you have this diary, thank God that prayer is answered. You mark that that prayer is answered. As one prayer is answered, you have another prayer request, another desire, another request you are making to the Lord. You have a new journal. There's a new key that you have this year. And it is a new key that opens the door for the new year. Uh, some people don't understand the old key will not open the new door. The new key is the, what is suitable for the new door. Because this year, the Lord is going to set a door before you. And it's going to be a year of blessing, a year of breakthrough. But remember, it's the new, it's the new door because the new year. And it's only a new key that will open that a new look. You look differently. If you used to look morose and sad, as if the whole world is on your back, as if all the problems of the world are on your shoulder, and then you used to look so down and dejected and rejected and gloomy with a long face this year, cheer up because there's going to be a shower of blessing upon you. There's going to be a new look and a new mind, a new mind. The way you think, and the way you carry yourself depends upon what you're thinking about. And if you think about trouble too much, trouble will say somebody is looking for me, okay, and I see him there, he's thinking about me, I am coming. You're not going to think about trouble. You're not going to think about problem. You think about solution, and you think about joy and happiness because what you think about most of the time, that's what comes. And what you meditate about most of the time, that's what is attracted to your life. It's, a, it's the law of attraction. That's what they call it, that you are thinking about. You are thinking about it. Have you ever think, thought about this? You're thinking of somebody, and you think about him, think about him, think about him. All of a sudden, the phone is ringing. Who is that? It's so-and-so. What? I was just thinking about you. Well, that's how life was. Think about him, and he's going to call and you think about the wrong thing and the wrong person and those wrong things and wrong people are going to come. But this new year, a new mind, a new nature, a kind nature, a loving nature, a gentle nature, a meek nature, an humble nature, a new nature, and a new object. A new object you are looking for. I'm not looking for the object of last year that is gone. I'm looking for a new object so that I can have a new life, a new enthusiasm in life, a new Patience with people. Patience with people. You know, sometimes you are patient with yourself, but you are not patient with your children. Patient with yourself. You are not patient with your wife. Patient with yourself. You are not patient with your uh, neighbors. But a new patience that you are not demanding this must happen now. This must happen now. You'll be firm on yourself and you'll be loving and kind on other people. And then you're asking new questions. You're not asking the old, old question. Why is everybody always against me? Why is this and why is this? Turn the question around. What are they looking for? They're trying to get my attention. What are they looking for? What should I do for them that will make them happy? And what is the request they're making? That person that is doing that thing is doing it because he's trying to get your attention. Give him some attention and ask a new question, a new relationship new relationship this year. That's what is going to make the year new. When you have this new relationship and you smile, you carry a smile everywhere you go and then you touch somebody's life and then you are nice to everybody around. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what you do. Just maintain that new relationship. It's not the other person that is going to make the relationship new. You are the one to create that new relationship a new sincerity. When you smile, make it sincere. When you give somebody something, make it sincere. Because 
You know, people can tell when you're giving them something. If you give them with a left hand, they know, they understand. If you give them with a frown, they understand. If you give them with hypocrisy, they understand. Give them something with sincerity. A new tongue. A new tongue. Not criticizing anybody anymore. Not cocking anybody anymore. Not slandering anybody. This new year is going to be a year of love. And it's going to be a kindness, a year one way. You understand the weaknesses of other people, the shortcomings of other people, the background of other people, and some things they're struggling about in their lives. And they try their best to get it corrected. And so you say, I'm going to be patient with them. I'm not going to, you know, cut them down, slander them, criticize them. I'm going to have a new tongue this year, a new unity between parents and children, between husband and wife and the family, a new unity unity in our schools, in our government, in our church, everywhere we go, a new unity and a new vision. I see something new. You must see something new. And you're going to have something new in Jesus' name. A new walk with the Lord. You wake up in the morning and say, Lord, give me grace today to walk in obedience and righteousness with you. A new x-ray, a new x-ray. You know what happened in the past? You only thought about, you know, photograph. You didn't talk about, you didn't think about x-ray. There's a difference between photograph and x-ray. When you take a photograph, you see your face, and then you might see your clothes. You don't see too much in a photograph. You see, the, the face of the person doesn't make him pass exam, and the, you know, whatever it is you see in the photograph doesn't make a successful career. It's the x-ray, x-ray the heart, x-ray the mind, and x-ray the spirit. When you x-ray what is inside, and you're not x-raying other people, you're not examining other people, you're not saying, why you see like that? Why is she like that? Why am I like this? What can I change in my life? And when I have a new x-ray every time upon my life, it's going, to, it's going to be a wonderful thing. Because this year will be wonderful. I can tell you that already. Because the Lord is going to do marvelous things in your life in Jesus' name. And then there's going to be a new year. Then there's going to be a new zeal. This year, I will not be cold. I said I will not be lukewarm. You'll not be cold. You'll not be lukewarm in Jesus' name. This is the new man. You're looking for the new man that is you. And when you have all this alphabet of the new man in your life, I'm sure that this year is going to be a great year. As we look at this, the new man on the king's highway, we're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, put off the deeds of the old man. Put off the deeds of the old man. Number two, you perform the duties of the new man. Perform the duties of the new man. Number three, pursue the delight of your new master. Perform the duties of the new man and pursue the delights of your new master. Number one, what's number one? But all the deeds of the old man. Remember, this is a new year. Don't talk like you talked last year. And don't act the way you acted last year. And don't behave the way you behaved last year. Don't do anything the way you did it last year. Find a new way of doing things and find a new way of expressing yourself and put off the old. We're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, verses 16 and 17. Matthew chapter 9. And there we're reading verses 16 and 17. No man put a piece of new clothes onto an old garment. For that which is put in to fill it up, take it from the garment, and the wrench is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. That's how to preserve the blessings of the Lord this year, new year, new man, new attitude, new action. All the old is gone in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 5. Colossians chapter 3, reading from verse 5. It tells us to put up the old, put up the old so that you can put on the new. I'm sure we do that every day. Every time you want to put on a new dress, 
you have to put off the old dress. Every time you want to put on the old new shoes, you have to put off the old shoes. Every time you want to wear new socks, you have to put off the old socks. And every time you want to, you know, go to a new place, you've never gone, you have to wear a new look. And it is that newness that actually makes everything new. And this year is going to be new. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth fornication, uncleanness, and all in it affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. Thank God that's only of the old. I said that's of the old. And they are gone in Jesus' name. For which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walk, that's past tense, past tense, walk some time when ye lived in them, but now also put off, put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Have you ever heard it? They say, practice makes perfection. Practice makes what? That means, whatever you do and do and do and do again will become a habit. And then you do it, you just do it, even without thinking sometimes. You know, if you're always angry at your children, they do a little thing, you're angry. Something has fallen down mistakenly, you're angry. And if you get angry and get angry and get angry repeatedly, you'll be an angry man, an angry woman, an angry child, and everything around you will be frowning at you because you're an angry personality. Put it up this year. This year, no anger. And then it says, and wrath, wrath is, you know, when you make fire. And you're not making the fire in the kitchen, you're making the fire inside your heart. And your heart gets hot. It gives high blood pressure, that malice, and that wrath, and that anger, and that irritation. It gives high blood pressure because you're making the fire inside you every time. And everything is burning. And then it says, and malice Malice is, you know, when somebody has done something against you, maybe they do it mistakenly or deliberately many years ago, maybe just last year, old year, and then you carry that into, into the new year. And you see the person this new year, you cannot smile, you cannot, you know, wait and say, Happy New Year, how are you today? And you're carrying the feeling of the old year into the new year, you're still keeping malice. Throw that thing out. Don't let the malice of old years spoil the new year for you. Because this year, nothing will spoil your blessing. And the blasphemy and the filthy communication out of your mouth. In verse 9, lie not one against another, seeing that he have put off the old man with his deeds. He says, throw them out. Don't allow them to stay. In Ephesians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 22. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, that she put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, put him off, the old nature, put that off, the old characteristic, put that off, and the old habit, put that off, that she put off concerning the old, concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And then it tells us from verse 27, neither Give place to who? Tell me out loud. The devil. Oh, how do you have you stop giving place to the devil? It, Revelation calls the devil the old serpent. The old serpent. And once you allow old thoughts, old ideas, old behavior, old character, old malice, old anger, the old serpent likes and loves those old things. You're giving invitation to the old serpent that is the devil. But when you repent of the old thing, you throw off the old thing, then that makes new, that makes everything new in your life. In verse 28, let him that stole steal no more. Stealing is of the past in Jesus' name. But rather let him labor. Why don't we steal? Have you noticed that the people who steal, they never prospered? Never, never prospered. 
They are never prosper. It's what you earn that makes you to prosper. It's what you sow that you reap very well. You know, but the people that allow other people to have their money there, their harvest there, and then they go to steal, they never prosper. The people who want to be winners, who want to be successful, who want to be conquerors, who want to be prosperous, they don't steal. You will not steal. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor walking with his sons the things which is good, that ye may have to give to them, to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. You know, nobody wants to, you know, get near you when your mouth is uh, having bad odor. And Filthy communication puts out bad odor. It makes just make the whole environment stink, and people turn away their faces, they turn away their mind, they turn away their lives from you because they say that thing coming out of his mouth is, is smelling, is stinking, Stink, stinking words, dirty words, bitter words, and words that will create fury and fire and bring unpleasant things. Let no evil, uh, corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers and grieve not the Holy Spirit. You know what? Anger grieves the Holy Spirit. Wrong. Gives the Holy Spirit, and uh, when you strive and fight against one another, that grieves the Holy Spirit. And if you want the Holy Spirit to represent your life every time, your ministry every time, and in uh, all and all, every time, anger and all those things must get away. It says, Grip not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all, all bitterness, how many kinds of bitterness? everything and all wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and then in verse 32 and be kind one to another tender hearted tell me the next thing forgiving one another forgiving one another why does this say forgiving one another i thought this is a new year and nobody will offend me in the new year you know what you cannot guarantee everybody else changing in the new year the only thing you can guarantee is you changing you cannot guarantee your neighbors changing. You cannot guarantee all your friends changing. You cannot guarantee anybody changing. The only person you can guarantee that will change this year is who? It's you. And when you change, everything around you will change. You know, you cannot guarantee that everybody will smile when you meet them in the morning. The only thing you can guarantee is that you will smile. And when you smile, it will produce smile from them. You cannot guarantee that everybody will be gentle. And, but you can guarantee that you will be gentle. And when you change, everything else will change. And when people do something that you say, why do they do that? You say, ah, that's the wrong question. New question. This is a new year. I cannot change everybody. How should I respond to what they are doing? I should love them and forgive them, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, as forgiving you. When God forgives, He doesn't keep on telling you, ah, remember what you did, 19 such and such and 2009. Remember what you did. When God forgives, He forgets. And that's what the Lord wants you to do this year. He wants you to forgive. You will forgive in Jesus' name. That means then if we're getting into the new year, we're going to have new blessings in this new year. We must forget some things and forsake some things. Number one, forsake the old prophet. Forsake the old prophet. Number two, forsake the old priest. The old priest. Number three, forsake the old passion. The old passion. Number four, forsake.